Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing some practice in oscillations. The question I'm going to go through is from OCR Physics A June 2013. Okay, well, let's get started. For the first part, we have an object which is oscillating with SHM. Place a tick in the box against each statement that applies to the acceleration of the object. First of all, the acceleration is in the opposite direction to the displacement. This is true. In fact, it is one of the defining characteristics of simple harmonic motion. So we can go ahead and place a tick there. Um, okay, the acceleration is directly proportional to the amplitude squared. No, that is definitely not true and uh, we know that because the um, acceleration is actually proportional to the uh, displacement not the amplitude with this being the defining equation of simple harmonic motion uh, next one the acceleration increases as the displacement decreases i'm afraid this is not true uh, if we just think about uh, something like a pendulum uh, just over here in the balance point the pendulum is going to experience the least acceleration uh, or if we had something like a um, something like a spring for instance f is equal to kx so in fact at zero displacement the uh, force and hence the acceleration will also be zero so this statement is not correct uh, finally, the acceleration increases as the speed of the object decreases. Yep, that is true. So uh, the reason why it's true is, um, well, actually the acceleration is greatest just here when the speed is zero. So let's say that this over here is the amplitude. This is where the acceleration of, the, of an object is the greatest. A different way that we can think about it is that in, in springs, which also perform simple harmonic motion, when uh, the speed of the object decreases, the displacement increases. And because of that, the force increases and the acceleration is actually counterintuitively the greatest when the um, speed is, uh, is zero. Okay, next part, use the graph to determine the frequency of the motion. So frequency is equal to 1 over the time period and from the graph we can see that the time period essentially is the distance um, is the time after which the wave cycle repeats itself so it's going to lead us up to here which is 1.2 now in this particular uh, graph it's a little bit unclear where exactly the period starts but we're going to take 1.2 um, as the time period so the frequency will be equal to 1 over 1.2 uh, just a quick check of the units okay we are given just seconds so we can go ahead and calculate this and if we put that in a uh, in a calculator we're going to get 0 0.83 hertz okay well how do we work out the amplitude of the motion now the most common mistake is to just find the amplitude from here and just We'll write this one down which is uh, about 0 0.08 uh, now this is I'm afraid very incorrect because this is not the amplitude this is the maximum speed now remember the speed of a harmonic oscillator which is what is being plotted on here is equal to um, plus or minus omega times the square root of a squared minus x squared from the graph we can actually work out the maximum speed or essentially take it out from the graph and we know that v max happens when x is equal to zero so this is going to equal to plus or minus omega the square root of a squared which is equal to plus or minus omega a so v max will be equal to plus or minus omega a which is also equal to plus or minus 2 pi f a okay well uh, our maximum speed 
from the graph is equal to 0 0.08. Uh, so this will be equal to 2 pi times the frequency, which is 0 0.83 times the amplitude. So I can just rearrange for the amplitude, which will be equal to 0 0.08 divided by 2 pi times 0 0.83. And if I put that into a scientific calculator, I'm going to get that my amplitude will be equal to 0 0.015 meters. For part three, the maximum acceleration of the object occurs at the amplitude. Remember, the general equation is that uh, acceleration, let's uh, have a look at the magnitude only, will be equal to omega squared times x with a little minus sign over here. And um, the acceleration is at maximum when x is at maximum. So a max will be equal to minus omega squared times a. Now we have the amplitude and we know what we can work out omega really easily. So we can work out our maximum acceleration. Our maximum acceleration will be equal to minus 2 pi f squared times a. Don't forget the square. This is uh, pretty crucial, uh, which means that a max will be equal to minus um, 2 pi times 0 0.83, which is our frequency. I'm going to square everything. I'm going to times it by 0 0.015 uh, of 1, 0 extra here, so 0 0.015 like so. And if I put this into a scientific calculator, I'm going to get about minus 0 0.42. Now, direction of this will be changing. So I'm just going to take the magnitude of that and I'm just going to write this down over here as the magnitude of 0 0.42 meters per second squared. Part C, let's have a look at resonance. With the help of a suitably labeled diagram, explain what is meant by the resonance of a mechanical system. Well, let's have a go. So this is what our diagram will look like. We have the amplitude on the y-axis and we have frequency on the x-axis. In fact, this is the uh, driving frequency in particular. Uh, there will be a peak at which the amplitude will be at a maximum occurring at the natural frequency at the of, of the object. Okay, well, now let's explain in words what is meant by resonance. So resonance occurs when the driving frequency, that is the frequency of the force that we're applying to that object, matches the natural frequency of that object. And when this happens, the amplitude of the oscillations reaches a maximum. We can see there's a maximum here on the graph and we need to make sure that we include that in the answer. The driving frequency is also a key word that we should definitely have in our answer. Finally, here is an example of uh, resonance. For instance, microwave ovens. Um, in microwave ovens, the microwave uh, EM radiation waves, they provide a driving frequency at the natural frequency of the water molecules and their amplitude increases. Okay, folks, so hopefully this makes sense. If there are any questions, please feel free to uh, drop a comment and thank you very much for watching.